When we think about the future of robotics, we always think of robots as humanoids, something that is separated from real humans. Elon Musk even said, we are already a cyborg, just at a very slow rate. It's normal to feel like you've lost a part of your body when you forget you leave your phone at home. It probably feels like that because our phones have tremendously improved many aspects of our everyday lives. Talk to a person 100 years ago, you would be seen as a superhuman. With your magical box, you can talk with anyone, anytime, from anywhere to everywhere, within seconds. This feeling of the convergence of humans and technology wouldn't only stop between us and our smartphones, it will be way beyond this. And this could change how you would imagine the future altogether and humankind's history forever. So now are you ready? Since the dawn of civilization, we rely heavily upon our imperfect biology. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. But as fellow humans, we all know our limitations sometimes. We don't have furs to protect us from the cold. We don't have horns to protect our heads from impact. We don't have four legs to run as fast as possible from predators. But we always tried to survive. That's why we all have the technologies we've invented. The goal is simple, to survive. Now we are in our comfort zone. We don't face predators anymore. But now we need technology to make our lives easier. We invented calculators to count things easier. We invented maps to navigate the world easier. We invented drugs to heal ourselves faster. It's just a natural step to upgrade our technology to be more helpful and closer to us. Including starting to converge them into our bodies. This would even be way more beneficial for people who have disabilities. Just like Professor Hare, one of the most famous researchers in artificial body part technology, who invented his artificial legs when he lost them in a hiking incident. With his first-hand experience seeing the advancement of artificial body parts come to life in recent years, he even says that humanity will end disability in the 21st century. This convergence will push the boundaries of what it means to be a human and may push us into the age of what some people say is transhumanism. Basically, transhumanism is a view that supports the modification and upgrade of our human bodies with technology. Or in short, supporting us to become cyborgs. Since the 90s, a lot of people are declaring their support for the transhumanism movements. From NGOs like Humanity Plus, study centers such as Singularity University, corporations and governments like Google and DARPA, well-known scientists, artists, academics, philanthropists, and journalists to a political party called Transhumanist Party are all pushing for the transformation of the human body as fast as possible without anyone noticing the issue of transhumanism could be the next political divide that may happen in the upcoming decades. Imagine there would also be an anti-transhumanism movement to keep the human body pure as it is, away from all convergence from technology. Regardless of the new upcoming era, how far are we actually from transhumanism? Have you ever wondered if we could, someday, upgrade our brain storage just like upgrading the RAM capacity of our computer? Neuralink a tech company backed by Elon Musk was said to have successfully implanted a chip in a monkey's brain. Just using his brain, the monkey could play Pong. No controller is needed. This kind of brain chip technology is called the Brain Computer Interface, or BCI. Imagine, this is like having a smartphone implanted directly into your brain. The communication between what you want and what you do is going to be instant. This is how Musk said that BCI technology would transform humans from analog into digital beings. Imagine BCI could enable us to download information directly to our brains, do telepathy-like communication, or enable us to see colors outside of normal human eye spectrums. But in the meantime, they will mostly be used to fight against brain diseases, such as Alzheimer, dementia, and back injury. The development of BCI technology, of course, is not anyone's monopoly. It is a race. Synchron, Paradromics, Neurable, Emotive, Kernel, Nextmind, Bitbrain, Science Corp, and many other companies are racing to lead the first BCI revolution. 
just like how Apple led the smartphone revolution with the launch of the iPhone back then in 2007. But transhumanism is not only limited to the brain, because other upgradable body parts are also part of this race. We've got bionics and exoskeletin. Besides supporting people with disability, these bionics and exoskeletons are being used for logistic and military purposes. In the area of eyewear and headgear, the battle of AR, VR, and metaverse is all about making bulky headwear into lightweight glasses. In the future, you may have a digital invisible workspace around and virtual translation when speaking with foreigners. Thanks to 3D printing, we may also be able to create artificial organs. Right now, 80% of organ donors are coming from dead bodies, and we simply don't want more people to die just for the sake of harvesting their organs. A renowned professor named David Sinclair was famous for saying, people that would live to 150 years were already born today. It's justified seeing that anti-aging technology is moving fast recently, especially when he found an enzyme that was able to make mice grow older multiple times quickly, but hasn't figured out to do the opposite. Similar to how our phones can get hacked, our mechanical body parts in the future may also have a risk of being hacked. Imagine a hacker that is able to move your arms or erase your memory from far, far away. This biohacking risk could probably be something unimaginable that challenges the development of transhumanism. And it probably won't only be misused by the terrorists. The government could also use this to spy on you. We may not care about our privacy being harvested left and right by the big tech. Then we may start to care when they're extracting precious behavior data from our own body parts every second. Now it has come to this. Not long ago, we were having surgery without sedatives. By modifying our imperfect biology, surgeries aren't that scary anymore. We may see death as a sad final moment for any human to endure, but then our grandchildren may see death as a timely body replacement or the moving of a being into digital immortality. At the end of the day, with hormonal changes, we could choose what we want to feel, erase the pain altogether, and become the superhumans that we depict in movies and novels. We're now seeing monkeys as species that is one level below us. But the new species of transhumanists may also see humans of today as a level below them. So, are you ready for the convergence?